guys, welcome. Hello. We're here for another week. Oh, it's always we just used to us. Um, to talk about Christmas. So we're back into our Christmas in July still. And we're gonna talk three yard quilts today, five yard quilts too. We offer both, but we're gonna make a Christmas quilt out of these three one yard cuts of flannel for it's from Known for Christmas from Riley Blake and how Tara. Oh, I forget, sorry, the designer. Anyway, so a three yard quilt, if you've been in our shop, you may have seen a bunch of these in the back. This is a three yard bundle. This is a five yard bundle. It's five one yard cuts and three one yard cuts. And we do those because there's all these fabulous patterns out there for three yard quilts and five yard quilts. Yep. So we're gonna show you how to make one today. We're not gonna get it all sewn, but we're gonna show you how we're gonna cut an entire quilt out of this. This quilt is the Christmas Forest from Fabric Cafe. I realize you can't see that really close up, but we'll get it to you. I we'll show you. We have a bunch of these in the, sh bunch of these in the shop. I'm gonna have Jen start cutting for us. What this is is you need three fabrics. You need two and usually colors. You need a couple contrasts, and you'll notice that with our bundles, there's usually a variance. We select them. So this is our background fabric. Plus we needed two colors. Now one thing we're doing different coming through here, what is red on here is going to be green. What's blue on here is going to be red. And so the reason I do that however you want that is because the red has stripes, which is great for that skinny border and the binding. Yep. And my green is a big print with so, gnomes and presents and it's awesome. So I want to go ahead and use that for my big border. So that's how you figure this. Another, so what am I cutting? Oh. I'm going to start cutting. You have to, it's fabric number two. This is fabric number two. You can't awesome. tell the measurements. Though. I won't remember. Okay, so as she starts cutting that, what I'm going to show you is, so this is another one of our three yard bundles. This is from. I love my eight and a half inch ruler. Seriously, I have to call her to be like, bring your eight and a half. I have an eight and a half, but it's not quilter select. And quilter select is just better, sorry. Um, right, I'm a ruler snob at this point in my life, which is okay. And so I made her bring hers because I haven't. We like haven't Sean bitten that yet. bullet. They're not cheap, but, but awesome. oh my gosh. Okay, add so, it to your Christmas list. Seriously. For if you want, we make Christmas wish lists in the shop. That is true. All right. Well, she cuts those. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. So this one is from Early Bird. You'll see we have a big print in it. We've got what works as a background print, and then we have a contrast print. And most of these patterns, that's how they work. Um, even on the five yard ones, we have more of a background and then contrasting prints. These quilt patterns even include your bindings. So it's pretty awesome. Fabric Cafe does the three yard ones. This is one of her small patterns. We keep them back in the shop with those. She also has quite a few books. You guys, there are eight patterns in this book for three yard quilts. Mm -hmm. Our friend Debbie, who works for us, is the queen of three yard quilts. But she, instead of buying three yards, three one yard cuts, she buys three one and a half yard cuts and makes them a little bit bigger. Well, because most of these quilt patterns are comprised of kind of simple blocks that are to repeat. And if you look at several of things done with Fabric Cafe here, um, she tells you how to make them grow. So yes. you can, you know. So for this one, if I wanted to make it pattern and enlarge it a little bit bigger, I would make five more blocks. I would need probably another quarter yard of each of my fabrics. Yep. And then it would be a much bigger quilt. So, um, but as far as the five yard ones go, I'm gonna point it out. These mostly come from the quilt factory. And you'll see we have kind of a background. I know you can't see these close. Two contrasting blues, a pink, and, um, oh, there, and then another blue on the border in your stop order and binding. So they're really great to use those one yard cuts or those one yard cuts that you've been collecting over time. They're right. really kind of handy. So we really kind of love them. We Same kind of a lot. Do. Okay, but while she's still cutting our fabric number two, another thing I wanted to tell you guys. So this about, is my leftovers from fabric number two. Yeah, this is a very efficient use of fabric. That's what these projects are which is awesome because we love efficient uses of fabric. Right. Because it's no fun to waste fabric, right? That's an eight inch square. 
if you need it. I know that this is supposed oh, to yeah. be long. That's right. Oh, it's because I know what it is. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. I do. Anyway, um, I know what she's doing. Good, because I don't. I started looking at this pattern about 10 seconds before we started filming. So. <laughs> So she's doing really, really, really good. So I'm really on top of it, and I know exactly what's going on. And I'm going to show you guys, we did our Grinch stockings last week, and you guys had asked about what the bigger Grinch panel looks like. And so I went ahead and brought him. He's pretty and awesome. this is, he's a 24-inch repeat. So it's 24 inches, and it says Merry Grinchmas. And, you know, it's 44 by 24. And so this is the big Grinch panel this year from... It's awesome. awesome. And some of the fabrics to go with it. Okay, there's two of them. One's on a red background and one is on a green background. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's cute. Tossed reindeer. It's not it's reindeer. Not, it's Max. It's Max. And if you don't know who Max is in regards to the Grinch, it's his dog. That he puts antlers, antlers on. on. And it's super, super, super cute. Right? Um, Sorry. Can I help you? Yeah. The other thing I was going to point out is um this quilt that's laying right here that you can't see that well sorry i piled stuff on it it's a three yard quilt out of this book some of her small patterns do make it into the books and so if you're going to make a whole bunch of these the books are definitely the better investment right personal opinion but there's such good patterns especially if you do um it's not in this one it's a lot of one. charity quilts uh because, like you said, they're fairly simple to put together. They're um, efficient. Efficient. Yeah. Anyway, so this is out of her other book that I didn't bring. Jen's reading the pattern very carefully. And um, so it, like I said, she made it bigger. She's using Cory Dantini's. Is it Cory Dantini? I think so. Um, Spirit of Halloween line. She did add a black stop border in it to kind of well, break it, it up. And it let things pop. And she really added well. the black binding to pop things out a little bit. And that's another fun thing about these is you can go ahead and add to them. I mean, for me on this one, I might add a white stop border around the trees before my red one. If I was making it for myself. But she... um but what she's done is be very careful about getting it into exactly those three yards. Them. It makes me feel like I cut so much I stuff. It's like, look at this giant pile of stuff I cut. All right, so green is fabric one. It's fabric one. Yeah, because that has the border. Yep. Okay. So long as I know what I'm doing. And then when she gets this cut, we're going to show you how to do one of the trees because this is triangle piecing. We did have to pick one that's triangles because... I have to be difficult, I guess. Well, we did choose to do Christmas fa fabric, and it naturally lended itself to um, the Christmas tree pattern. The Christmas tree pattern, which had triangles. So I'm, we're going to do triangles. So such it is. But once I get a triangle cut, this keeps wanting to fall off. No. I would move this, but I feel like you need it. Yep, I do. So I'm just going to set these things aside. Okay. Oh, oh in flight. Yes. I was just going to tell them about this. So okay. this is Jen's panel quilt that she made with the big J Ricker Frisch panel. It's this line is called All About Christmas. And, and this is, is the big panel and it totally is all about Christmas. We've got stamps, cards, all things vintage because that's that's how, how she works. She is. That's how Janet works. That's exactly how Janet works. So she used a panel pattern called In Flight for this. And she if made, you look at the pattern, it doesn't look anything like this. She made two minor adjustments and I'm going to say for starters, that pattern has a panel that goes this way and so the quilt's this way. Jen clearly turned it on its side. It did. Um, the other thing is that the pattern has you put this black as a stop border here and here. Jen left that out to make the quilt less long rectangular. And then she used the background fabric here and added a small border <clears> here. And down here on the bottom, right here before the black, um, just to kind of make the quilt a little bit more square. We have kitted as many of these as I can, based on how many patterns and some of the fabric. So if you were interested in this, it's on the website. It's called 
all about Christmas in flight and it's super adorable but we have lots of panel patterns that you can use this cute panel for and I was going to show you the other panel she made oh, to go with this collection so cute and it's super fun and it's I think I'm going to have to quilt that one up too it um totally I love placemats you guys I love that's, and there's six making and quilted placemats and I don't mind making six because there's five in my family and things get dirty so this is her placemat panel it's also just a 24 inch panel, so it's $9, $8.99, whatever you want to call it. Um, for me, I like my placemats a little bit bigger, so I would put a little a border. border around each of these. Absolutely. But we have six cute like, rectangle blocks that would cards. make adorable placemats, that are made to make adorable placemats. But they'd also make really cute blocks in a quilt. In fact, I think she's holding, she's hosting a quilt along right now. She is. That she uses this. But it's, this is her placemat panel for All About Christmas. And it just feels like every vintage Christmas thing I ever saw as a kid. So vintage when I was a kid. So, you know, really vintage. Um, but it's apparently and I am now vintage. And such fun little details. Like, okay, so the, the postmark right here. It's like it's Bethlehem, from Bethlehem, City of David, Luke 2.11. I love it. It's, yeah. She's really good with details and adding some fun things in. These are Christmas carols in the text. Yep. And um, anyway, it's just really cute. I really like it. I might have Me to do something with it. Too. Although, oh, I have so much Christmas. All right, so there's those. I keep thinking I have so much Christmas. And then I go to pull out my Christmas quilts. I was and I honestly don't have that at what much. I didn't have last year. I have way more fall and Halloween. Way, way, way more Halloween. Ah, uh, probably has to do with my daughter. Yeah, I think it does. Seriously, I still have my Halloween Hubbard Ashley quilt in my car, being bound because it's taking me forever. And I was driving her to summer school this morning, and she's got it on her lap, just like petting the minky. Every time she sees that quilt, she's like, "This is gonna be mine, right? Like this is mine. I'm claiming this quilt." I keep trying to tell her she already has a Halloween quilt for her bed. She kind of doesn't care. No. Nope. That's okay. She's trying to claim the one I made too. I know. And I was like, your mom bought the fabric. She doesn't care. She wants yours. She wants mine. All the Halloween quilts. All the all things Halloween. All right. She you can make all. a tree. Ooh, yeah. Are we ready? Okay. So I'm this keep tree isn't made with one big triangle like the Halloween haberdashery hats were. This is made with four rectangles. Have you ever heard tree. of a half square rectangle? This is a half square rectangle. And they're a little tricky. Or it's actually called a half rectangle triangle. Half yes. Yeah. It's, it's weird. A, there's nothing square about it. Nope, not a thing. But it's really the same process. So I'm going to stick this over here and this. So I need one, well, technically to make a tree, I need two gnomes and two backgrounds. And two backgrounds. You might want to make sure if your fabric's directional that the uh, tree is going the same direction. Yes. These gnomes are actually tossed. tossed. Which so awesome. it doesn't matter which way they're going to go. But because I am fussy, I'm going to try and make this because this is my the whole gnome I have in this one. I'm going to make him show up. So I'm going to have our line be here yeah. and cut off the presents because that's... I'd rather have the whole gnome. How I am. I'd rather have the whole gnome. Because otherwise so, you could keep the presents, but they'd be upside down. I'm going to be fussy about it. You are fussy. I'm really good at being fussy. Does this one have you overhang it by a quarter or does it have it you trim? It says draw corner to corner. You're gonna go, wee, yeah, like that. Did we do something wrong here? Blue Sometimes moment, don't. pictures don't match up. Oh, it would have to be down. Oh, I was doing the wrong corner. That's why. Sorry, you guys. Okay. No. That way. Ha ha, I figured it out. It's this way. Half okay. rectangle triangles I are have to tricky. relearn this every, every time. time. I know. It's like, what am I doing? I'm looking again? at the picture. I'm going to actually grab my Frickson pen and put this over here so you guys can see it. I want to show you what I'm doing. So we have, they are 
the thing that I wanted to do was this. Okay. And that is clearly not, not going to work. The map says no. Work. The map. Yeah. So we line it up here. So hypotenuse to hypotenuse. Jen's going to bring up if the we geometry. We're going to draw lines from corner okay, to corner. Okay. And I'm going to show you what this does. When this flips open, it's going to be here. See? And so my gnome's all showcased and we're here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line and pin this. Okay. And normally, you know, if I'm on a machine at home, a lot of times I don't draw lines like this, but this is not a square. This is not a square. It's a long seam and I don't have as long of a bed as I do at home. And so the only time I draw lines at home is if they're longer than my diagonal seam tape will show up. Right. And this on a featherweight totally is. Absolutely. And I'm even going to pin it even though it's flannel and sticking together. Now, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about flannel. I have a lot of people who tell me how much they hate working with flannel. Um, flannel is definitely something that... So there are better two. brands and there are worse brands. Yes. Yeah. So do you cut on, you sew on both sides? Yeah, you sew on both sides. Sweet. I'm reading instructions, you guys. really small. It's good to read instructions. You know, ideally, if you're not us and reading a pattern as you're shooting a video, uh, you read through an entire pattern before you even start cutting. And then you check for pattern corrections. Because it's good to get an idea of where it goes. Check the website for pattern corrections. Um, we uh, didn't do that. My bad. So I'm assuming they're correct. But if they're not, it's my fault for not checking the pattern for correct. We will send Donna a message. Yes, but it's not, yeah. I know to check for pattern corrections because you would be amazed how often something gets missed in editing. Constantly. You know, you guys. They, they know what the right number should be there, but somewhere oh. along the editing line. I did it with the toss pumpkins pattern. Yeah. Because I made it with four, four quarter yards, you guys. And when I wrote the pattern, I typed five. Right. I made it with four. Now, is it detrimental for you to have an extra fabric? Absolutely not. But it did throw some people off because the kids we made had four They were like, wait a minute, I missed they, the fabric. They were like, you missed one. I was like, no, I made it with four. Then I realized, oops, my typo that, and it spell check doesn't catch it. <laughs> right. And, and us reading over the pattern for her, it went right over it. Anyway, it wasn't until somebody got their kit and thought they were missing a fabric that it was like, well, yeah, I did make it with four. <laughs> You're right. All right. My bad. Okay. It happens. Again. Um, okay. I love this because we're still going to have a border. Yes. These gnomes are going to be such a cute border. I'm going to keep cutting stuff out because I'm going to send this home with Liz to um, make today. I'm going to go home and piece it. And then I'll quilt it tomorrow. And then you'll see it. And then Yay. you'll see it all done. These have you trim these, right? These one that I trim. I should hope so. <sighs> because I am me and I like to go a little scant on my half square triangles, half rectangle triangles, whatever they are. I sew a little scant because I like trimming up space so that I can make sure it's perfect because I am like that, I guess. Yes. Oil in that send a little cookie. It is a little cookie. My the printing's a little weird too. Okay. This is flannel. Flannel can be forgiving. Flannel is forgiving. Except you're My not sewing this right. Broke. Why didn't you switch to this one? What is wrong? No kidding. We like the deco bob, but let me be honest. My featherweight prefers the RFL. Well, if I have it all set it up, does. You know what? I'm going to tell you guys something. Looking at this little bit of leftovers, all I can think is I should have made the border half an inch wider. Quarter of an inch at least. Yeah. That's okay. If you buy this, cut your border a little bit half an inch wider. You have a little bit of extra. But I do appreciate that she doesn't have you using every last inch I of the do fabric. Too. Because if you miscut a, a strip off by like half an inch, and you need to trim it down or something, right? It's it's really good. It can to be have a problem. That little bit of extra. In fact, I miscut something the other day. I was supposed to cut a three and a half inch strip, and I cut three inches, and I only had like two and a half inches left after that. So I had to come into the shop to get like three inches, three of fabric. and a half inches of fabric. It's always painful. 
and then you know you have to buy a quarter of a yard and it's just not not fun so i don't mind having that bit of extra yeah. even though i tend to be really frugal with my fabric right because all right fabric three My tension disc is just really tight because it is moving huh. back. Where's mine? Well, I'm wondering why her binding measurement is what it is. Well, we need to worry. Oh, no. I, I don't do like need that. to worry about it. Just kidding. We won't cut binding right I now. I think there's a typo. And I would check the website for corrections, but we're currently filming this on my phone. So I will check the website for corrections afterwards. But let me tell you something. If somebody, if you're not using Minky and they tell you to cut one and a quarter inch wide strips for binding, don't. Don't do it. Check for corrections because there's no way I'm actually supposed to fold this in half and fold it in half again. Because nope. the math says no. All right. Sorry. Oh, I love how that sounds. Do you want me to play? Okay. Yeah, Jen's gonna play with tension, straight. and I'm gonna cut. So, oh okay, wait, back to fabric three. Oh, I do. I know. Page five. Oh, behind that. Again. Okay, Jen's gonna fix it for me. That's what she does. She fixes things for me. Apparently, well, and this look. Oh, that that'll do it. When your thread's caught up, it didn't come off the spool right. It's not actually in your machine. Yeah, that'll, that'll completely, completely do it, you guys. Seriously, when you have a tension issue, step one, unthread completely. Rethread the machine. Always. And I know it's really easy to look at it and say, but it's threaded oh, right. Oh, but it, or machine. it's only out in this one spot. So I'm just going to fix this one spot. Mm -mm. Unthread it all the way and start over. And it's the same thing with our long arms, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is I do it with the big old machines. I do them with the tiny machines. I do it with my Bernina. I know, I glance at my Bernina. I'm like, it's fine. And it's like, no, something's off. One little thing is not where it goes. And you think that those little thread guides aren't that big of a deal. They're a big deal. And, but they're, they're really a big deal. It's amazing how much they affect. I mean, that's why they're there, right? Right. But it's amazing how much they can affect the overall tension of the machine yep definitely so yeah be i see it a lot though when people ask what's going on with my machine or why is it sewing like this and i'm like your thread is wrong it's like did you re thread it? i don't even know your machine but if your sewing is looking like that something's threaded wrong yeah if you get the big uh thread piles the big threading knots right or whatever it is yeah, something's not off. So that's, there we go. Ow. You know what I would assume? That's the border and that's the binding. That's what I think too. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know what the typo is. Yeah. It's just a matter of which one's which. But I'm gonna check the website for a correction. Okay. okay. If there isn't a correction, then Almost I'm gonna always email the designer and tell the designers her. Designers have a website with a contact me button. I'm gonna email her and say, hey, so I noticed this. Right. But seriously, this is something we see from awesome designers. Yes, all the time. No kidding. We it has nothing to do with whether they pay quality attention. Designer. We have found errors and patterns from I mean, the best of the best. And and it's almost always something with the final edit. Yeah. You know, because they go back and look at their notes, they go back to what their pattern tester did, and they're like, oh, this is what it was supposed to say. And somewhere in somebody formatting it, probably at their printer or their editor or whatever, whatever company publishes the patterns for them, that, you know, Someone hit little... copy paste in the wrong spot. Here you go. Good job. I'm going to do a measuring after I do this because my guess is I need five of one and four of the other. I think you're right. 
So I was like, why is the stop order so big? I know, that's what I thought too. So it's, yep, yep. Okay, so I'm gonna cut, I'm changing what I'm cutting. I'm making assumptions, you guys, so that I can cut this whole thing out. But, do, 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 do. this is where you critically think. I know that that's critical not thinking everyone's favorite skills. thing. And the math isn't everybody's favorite thing, but it's okay. okay. That... Gracias. She's right here. Thank you. I know what she's thinking. Okay, we're almost done. And we're going to show you guys how this tree works out. And yeah, then I'm going to go home and make the rest of them. Because Cause... I haven't made enough quilts in a day in the no. last month. No. Two weeks. I'm going to finish strawberry blossoms today. And hopefully... A mermaid one as well. I have so much binding to do, you guys. It is insane. The other day, I had five quilts stacked up. So I was like, these all just need bound. In fact, I machine bound a quilt on Sat Saturday night because I did not have time. So I was like, it was, it was our huge choose to be block the month quilt. And I already have like four quilts to be bound. And you know, Jen and I are compulsive hand binders. And Which I really enjoy doing. I do. But this quilt's big. And I already have like four. And I needed... That's what's left over. Good job, Red. And I needed it done quickly. And so... Compulsive hand binding was not going to get to happen on that one. And I machine bound it. And one of our employees yesterday, Diane, she noticed that it was machine bound. And she told me she was proud of me for machine binding. <laughs> She's like, I'm proud of you for giving in and doing that when... You're like, listen, this was a hard choice. It clearly needed to be done. <laughs> but I'm not bad at machine binding. I just Oh man, but when, OCD, but when you inner perfectionist in me just But when you struggles. like hand binding and that's what you usually do, it doesn't matter how good you are at machine binding, it still looks wrong. Yeah, it's just my But you know, we're obsessive compulsive and we know okay, it. Okay, so we got binding, border. I'm gonna grab the iron. Other border. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't cut me, please. I can cut you. Iron. We'll turn it on. That helps. And we'll make a tree. Okay, so we have our half rectangle. What does it need to trim down to? Did you read that? Oh, yeah. Right. Hold on. Oh, grabbing. Oh, after you cut that. Grabbing my clapper. Ooh, yes. Let's grab a clapper. I'm going to show you guys something fun. Have you ever heard of a Taylor's clapper? That is what this is. It is what it so, is. So I'm going to press these open because I am. And because flannel to me is extra bulky, and y'all know bulk and I don't get along. We're not really friends. Ah, you down it? Yep, right there. Okay, there's the, the eight inch square. Okay, so we're gonna trim. You should plug that in. It helps. I was like, my iron is not good. Okay. Um, so these... Because I use vintage irons, I'm slightly compulsive about unplugging them. Unplugging it. Like, I just, I don't mess around with it. I don't, they will not automatically assume. turn themselves off. I mean, in my sewing room, because I have a vintage iron, um, it's plugged into a power strip that has a foot button on it. Yeah, mine too. So, when I, I just, get up to leave, I mean, I'm talking, I get up to leave my sewing room to go get a drink. I just push the button, it powers it off. Yes, because a lot of the safety features that have come with modern technology, they are safety features. They are. The auto turn off, the, like, the iron that I use, you know, that we use for clothing at my house and stuff. It has that, yeah, you, you know, it doesn't bend over and it turns itself off. Which yeah. is awesome. Or if I have it down for too long, it beeps at me and turns itself off. Right. These don't do that. No, they're great, but they don't do that. Okay, it's still getting hot. So this is the Taylor's Clapper. This one is from the Gypsy Quilter. We have this size and a smaller one. Yep. But if you've ever seen them and wondered what they're for, they have these grooves on the side, and you push them onto your seam, and your seam gets I flatter. Mean, so these are used in tailoring clothing. I mean, getting that suit lapel, that seam allowance, everything, they're flat. Like, seriously, people beat seams. Yes. That's what it's for. My husband came into my sewing room last night and was like, what's the block of wood? <laughs> it's hardwood. And the thing is, what it will do is it will also absorb any moisture so that it will dry this out faster. It does. I mean, honestly, you put the clapper with the wool mat, holy crap. You know, 
And with this flannel, you get really nice flat seams, which is great because Jen's going to show you how to score this up. Right. So that we can put them together. Right. So there's going to be overhang in the top and the bottom, which there should. I love these rulers. This nice 30 degree angle line. That's what we're working with. That's what we're working with. So make sure that is what is on right. your, your trim it up line. Right. To get things where I want it to go. Now this doesn't have a lot of extras in it. It has some extra top and bottom for the size that it wants it to be, but not a lot of extra on the side over here. Um, that's fine. But I think that diagonal line is the most important thing. It is for sure. So while I'm going to cut some off over here and, you know, leave it over there. I mean, I guess I could do it like this, but I want, well, because then your points end up nice and sharp. Right. But this is partial part of the reason I sew these a little scant to give myself that little bit of extra. But, this but don't a ever, scant. but don't ever trust that it's just going to end up the size. Cause what I want, I'll show this to you in just a second when I'm done trimming this, cause I don't like to give away sizes, but what I want is I still need a seam allowance. So yes. my point up here is a quarter of an, of an inch down. And now I have a nice and uh, yep, triangle so that they're going to sew in here and we're going to have a nice point there. But we want to trim them up. Don't ever assume that, oh, I sewed it the way they told me to. I'm done. I always trim them up just like I do with half square triangles. triangles, flying geese. Um, putting it together is one thing. Trimming it is another job. It's just the next step. It really is the next step of the process. Right. So I'm leaving this down here and going right on the point there. Okay. It's fine. Okay. It's going to go on the point on the other side. Yep. That's my plan. It makes a mess. It takes time. And the trick you know with what? doing this, turn on a good movie, turn on an audio book, just stand there and trim them all. And trim them all. But Rotating cutting mats are also great. But now that I have these two sides, just going to sew them together and sew them together and we have a Christmas tree. Right. And you guys, I'm actually kind of excited about this because what it is, is it's not wasty triangles. Nope. Because otherwise we'd be cutting off all kinds of stuff. See, and this one's going to go this way. And you can't have a three yard quilt and have wasty techniques. Nope. It doesn't work. You can't waste half your fabric and end up with something. So they're very, um, they're very efficient uses of fabric. That's the phrase I was looking for. So I knew it. We use it all the time, right? You guys know our lines. But you know, I love an efficient use of fabric. I mean, I got into this hobby when my budget for quilting was this big, you know? So I couldn't buy all the crazy tools and I mean, I remember making a pattern and cutting off like, like they'd have me cut like five inch squares and I'd lose half of it. I'm so mad, you know? We'll press them on the front. I love a top press. Me too. It's like, oh, it's pretty flat, but. Ah, beat Knock it. Them down. And there's, there's our tree. tree. These have some separating blocks in between that'll look like a stem. Yep. And it'll be a trunk. It's a tree, so it's a trunk. It's a trunk. Hello, Miss Horticulture. I, I do have a degree in that subject. Um, yes, you do. Anyway, so, but this is our gnomes for Christmas. I'm going to go home and keep working on it after I go see the dentist. I know that sounds exciting. Fun. And uh, so follow our Instagram and Facebook. And The nice thing is if, if you see any of the three-yard patterns or the five-yard patterns, I mean, you don't need the fabric requirements. By no. three yards, by five yards. So it's the same thing here. Two contrasting colors and a background, right? If it's a five yard color pattern, it's usually one background and like kind of two that go together and two other ones that go together. Yep. That's so about it. That's it. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you Bye. next week.